It's almost time for kids' time. We're gonna be late. It's time to share. There's a world out there looking for a friend like Jesus. It's time to share. There's a world out there. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Hi, boys and girls. Have you ever gotten into a fight with your brother or sister? Maybe they said something about you that made you really mad, or maybe they called you a name and you called them something even worse. Well, there are so many things that brothers and sisters fight about, but just because it's common for brothers and sisters to fight, it doesn't make it right, does it? You know, kids, there are many ways that we can share Jesus with others, but one of the very best ways is to choose to get along in your own family. Sure, there are a lot of things that your brother and sister might do to make you feel like fighting. But as my mom and dad said to me when I was little, a family is for loving each other, not for fighting with each other. God knows being kind to each other is the very best way to solve problems and make friends in the family rather than enemies. <laughs> the Bible tells us that long ago there was so much fighting among God's family that God sent Obed the prophet to give them a very special message. What do you think Obed told them to do? Well, that's what our Bible story is about today. But first, let's see what Ranger Rod has to show us. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Nature Time. Today, we're in beautiful Western Montana at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. It's a beautiful facility. I'm here with my great friend, Libby, and we're gonna talk just a little bit about grizzly bears. Boys and girls, besides a horse, which you all know is my favorite animal in the world, Grizzly bear is second. Ranger Rod has spent thousands of hours in the backcountry, in the wilderness, hiking, backpacking, horsebacking, and in areas where grizzlies are, and I've never really had a big problem with one, but evidently we're here at the Grizzly Discovery Center, and some of these bears have gotten themselves into some kind of trouble because of human contact. Could you tell us just a little bit about that, Libby? Uh, we have eight bears here, and all of our bears are here because of conflicts they did have living out in the wild. We have several bears whose mothers were unfortunately shot and killed when they were just five months old. And we do have a few bears here that were able to get into garbage, pet food. Speaking of getting into garbage, uh, we're watching these bears get in a garbage can right now. What, what's the deal with that? Well, we have a testing protocol here that we work with Living with Wildlife and the okay. IGBC. And since you need bears to find out if a container is bear proof or not, manufacturers send their product here and we oh, give it to the bears sure. to see if they can break into it. We've tested everything from garbage cans to pack boxes to camp caches. Um, you name it, the bears have tested it. So these bears that are out here right now, they're not going to end up being put back into the wild. Once they've learned that there's, there's a human food source available, it uh, wouldn't be safe for them to put them back out in the wild. No, what happens with a bear with garbage, it becomes highly addicted to them. And once they get the easy food source one time, they'll remember that they can get it again and again and again. And for people who don't store their food properly and the reward is given over and over again, that bear is not going to be able to live in the wild any longer. So when he makes a mistake and he never forgets that mistake, it becomes detrimental to him. Yeah, a fed bear is a dead bear, and so when we don't store our food properly, pet food, garbage, bird seed, things like that, the bear's gonna pay the ultimate price. We right. get to go on our merry way, we get to do whatever we want, but the bear's life in the wild is pretty much over. So not only for people who live in bear country, with their garbage, they have to be careful, but maybe even more so with campers. Can, can campers affect that? I mean, if boys and girls come to Yellowstone National Park with their family, is there something they can do yes. to be careful? They can keep a clean camp. We teach, oh. we keep about, we teach about keeping a clean camp. Uh, if you cook, what to do with those dishes, what to do with your clothes, if you made a smoky barbecue oh, smell, right. um, your, from your toothpaste to your snacks. Um, again, it's you've got to keep yourself safe in bear country. You can't expect the bear to know what to do when you show up, but you need to know what to do when you show up in bear country. Now, you mentioned something about even some of the smaller things. How good is a bear's nose? Tell us a little bit about, about their abilities to, to open can, things and can, to find things. Their sense of smell is their greatest sense of smell. One of the things we do here at the center is we hide food for the bears when they come out into the habitat. Oh, I can wow. put one tiny little grape 
in a rock field over there, one grape in, in 50 rocks, they're gonna go to the one rock that has the grape under it. The bears have a great sense of smell, definitely. Isn't that interesting? Wow, well these bears put on quite a show, as the boys and girls can see, while they're digging into these containers, and they're actually up there bouncing on this container. They learn pretty fast then how to get into a human food source. What about automobiles and other things? Are there other things besides just dumpsters or, or packs, backpacks that bears can get into? If you have food in your car and you leave the window down just this much, a bear oh, wow. can get into the car and get the food reward. Um, throughout Yellowstone, there are all kinds of food boxes that campers need to put their food in. Um, and again, hiking in bear country with a backpack full of food, if you're out in the back country, that's a bad idea. What do you have to do if you, if you have food in the back country, you're on a backpack trip, what do you have to do with that food? Well, they do make food storage containers that um, have been tested here that are considered bear proof. So obviously if you're camping, there's sure. all kinds of lessons to learn here at the Discovery Center on how to wow. stay safe in bear country. Well, Libby, you have a beautiful facility here. I'm so impressed. And this is a great place. Now families are invited. I would suggest that every family <laughs> that comes to Yellowstone National Park. Spend some time here at the Grizzly Discovery Center. There's no guarantee you're gonna see a grizzly bear while you're out there in the back country or driving on the Grand Loop Road. Here but you will. You come to, <laughs> here we're gonna see one? Definitely. Guaranteed? At least, at least seven. <laughs> at least seven, fantastic. All right, boys and girls, that's all the time we have, but we sure enjoyed watching Grizzly and Stoke try to get into these containers. Until next time, this is Ranger Rod saying, let's all enjoy God's great outdoors. Welcome to Learning Time. I'm glad you joined us today. You know, by the looks of these things on the table, it kind of looks it's like it's going to be interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, let's introduce our helpers because I'm going to need some help with this science experiment. And I've got Annie over here. Now, Annie, you know, if it's raining outside, uh, would you rather play indoors or outdoors? Indoors. I would, too. That's a safe place to be. Now, I have got Noah over here. Now, Noah, do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah. Uh, tell us about their ages. Well, I have a baby brother that's three and a baby sister that's one. Oh, cool. Hey, has anybody at your house used diapers? Yeah. Oh, good, because uh, you're experienced with diapers, and our science experiment today has to do with diapers and staying dry. Well, I've got Venice over here. Now, Venice, let me ask you a question. Uh, have you ever been all wet? Yes. Yeah, do you like to be wet? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, how do you dry off anyways? With a towel sometimes. With a towel sometimes. Well, today we're going to be talking about staying dry in a different way. So, hey, let me get my helpers to come on up here. And I want you to put our safety glasses on. Come on up. There you go. And grab a pair of safety glasses because we're going to do an interesting science experiment. Now, this science experiment, you know, you can do at home. Uh, but uh, you need to get permission first. And uh, what we need is uh, some of these right here. Uh, what are these, guys? Diapers. They're diapers, and diapers keep us dry, don't they? Oh, well, they sure help, don't they? Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a diaper or these diapers apart. Have you ever taken a diaper apart? No. Oh, well, this ought to be fun, shouldn't it? 
Yeah, well here, here's a diaper for you, and here's a diaper for you. Now this is how we're gonna do it. You actually have to open the diaper up, okay? We're gonna open it up, just like this. Yeah, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice soft, and it has nice soft material in there. And then uh, we're gonna take kind of the inside, inside apart, just like this a little bit, okay? I'm gonna help you with yours, all right? And then, you know what, here, feel this over here. Can you feel the inside? Can you feel something on yours that, that feels like it's kind of a little granules of stuff like sand yeah. now hey what would they put would they put sand in diapers no, no. would they put sand in diapers no well, I hope not. Uh, you might get sand in your diaper, but, you know, that's probably from playing. But you know what? Instead, you know what that, that is? That is actually a chemical inside. Uh, that's why it feels kind of sandy. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is this. I want you to take that and just kind of tear it apart and just kind of look at all of that kind of dust stuff just, just sticks right on the table. Yeah, get all of those little granules. Now, those granules happen to be a compound that we call sodium polyacrylate. And that's a hard thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, sodium polyacrylate. You know what it is? It's a chemical that when water touches it, it actually absorbs a tremendous amount of water and it holds the water in the diaper. Now, don't you want diapers to hold water? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we want diapers to hold a lot of water, don't we? Because, you know, the worst thing to do is to have a diaper that leaks. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, we don't want the crazy leaking diapers. Okay, now what we're going to do, oh, yeah, we don't want to breathe this stuff. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to put this stuff here on the floor. Let's get rid of all of this here. And we're going to get rid of all of the fluff, okay? So we're going to try to get all of that chemical out of there, okay? That's right. We're going to put all this stuff on the floor. I wonder who's going to clean that up. I don't know. Okay, all right. And then here, okay, I'll take this, and let's get these little fuzzy parts off, okay? All we have are those little granules. Can you see those granules? It looks like sand, doesn't it, or sugar or salt. Now, let's pile it all up in a pile. Shall we do that? Pile it all up in a pile right there. Okay, yeah, help us do that, okay? Now, you can do this at home, and uh, but don't put your stuff on the floor, <laughs> okay? Okay, now, I'm going to take all this fuzzy stuff off, okay? And so, all we have is that big pile of stuff. All right, hey, now this is great. Now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to have them put all those little granules in this cup. Here, why don't you hold the cup, and we're going to, no, we're just going to go ahead and shove them here. Can you hold it right there? Yeah, there you go, and go nicely right in here, and we're going to put it all in there. Okay, put the cup back on the table, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some water very, very quickly. You want to add the water in there? Okay, real quick, just dump it all in, and you know what happens? Those little, those little granules are going to absorb all of the water so that the water is going to be held in a gel so it won't come out of the cup. And that's going to be very interesting. And that's what happens in our diapers because we don't want all that water to come out. We don't want that water to come out at all. Now, this may take just a, a little more time here. Let's see what we got over here, okay? Hope we don't run out of time for that to happen. But it doesn't happen very instantly. And uh, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. It's, we're getting more and more gel in there and hang on to it. Let's see how what's happening. In fact, you can see. Can you see? Can you see how it looks kind of a uh, little whitish in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's starting to turn into a gel and it's almost all gelled up. Isn't that interesting? Now, you know what? All of the compounds that we have, they all come from uh, people that know chemistry and they mix different compounds together to get some very interesting reactions to take place. And it's almost there, isn't it? We got just a little more to happen right over here. And you know what we can do? Uh, now, that doesn't look like it's much liquid in there, does it? No, not at all. And if we can wait just a, a little more time right here, we can actually take this and we could turn it upside down and the water will stay right in the cup. And that should be interesting, shouldn't it? And so, uh, so let's try that. I'm going to turn this upside down. Looky there. Did it come out of the cup? No. No, it's all there. And that's what happens in a baby diaper. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I think so, too. Well, remember, boys and girls, whenever we study about science, we learn more about our Creator, God. Ah, but elders, aren't we winning the war in Judah? Yes, we're winning the war, but I'm not so sure if this war is, is what God would want us to be doing. Well, we've got to do what we think is right. And yes, I think we, we need to go to war against Judah. Well, we, we're doing that, and I understand we are winning. Well, we have a responsibility not only to God, but we have a responsibility to this city as yes, well. We do. 
What's going on? Captain's here, Captain. Get through, get through. Wait, Captain. wait, stop, stop. Sit up, right there. Stop. Sit up, right there. Stop what you're doing. Get out, get out. Sit down, you're lucky we didn't stop. leave you behind. Stop. What? what? What are we doing? We're brothers and sisters here. We all worship the same God. How far have we fallen? Listen to me, Israel. Look back at your, your history. Abraham, by faith, followed God. Enoch walked with God. Moses, remember the cloud? Remember the cloud that, that led them by day and the fiery pillar by night? Joshua, choose ye this day whom you will serve. God never wanted this war and this fighting. What are we doing? We've, we've fallen away from God. When we hurt each other, God hurts. When we reject each other, God is rejected. Please, it's time to turn back to God. Remember Joshua's words. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Don't look at the other nations for your way to live. Look to God. Soldiers, you're sons of God. Captives, you're sons and daughters of God. Please remember whose you are. Do not follow the ways of the world. Let's turn back. Let's repent. Let's accept his forgiveness and his grace. He's never left us, but we break his heart. Please put down your swords. Trust in God. He will fight for you. Please. He's ready to begin again. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Please, let's restore our worship of God. Deliver us from ourselves, God. People, we must listen to Prophet Obed. Guards, you shouldn't have brought the captives here. We have offended God enough already. Don't add to our sins and our grief. Go, leave us now. Leave us. Bring our captives food. Bring them water. Bring them clothes. Let us take Bring care of our brethren. Oh, brothers, forgive us. We have sinned not only against God, but we've sinned against you too. May Bring God them have mercy Bring them upon us. Forgive us for what we've done. Feed them, clothe them, cleanse their wounds. Bring them clothes.
boys and girls, it's time for Miss Brenda's book of the day. And today's book is called Passionate Prayer. And I kind of know the author to this book because guess what? Miss Brenda wrote this book. It's called Passionate Prayer and it's my own personal answer to prayer stories. And you can uh, read all about it. There's stories here where I went to the mission field for the very first time and there's people that I prayed about and it's a wonderful worship book for you. But I want to tell you today's guest actually has a story in this book and her name is Sarah. Sarah, welcome Hi. back to the program. Hi. I'm so excited to have you back. Do you know, Miss Brenda was just talking to you a few minutes ago, wasn't I, that it was five years ago uh -huh. when you first came to be on Kids Time, right? Yeah. Can I tell the boys and girls a, a little bit about your story? Yeah. They can read all about it in my book. It's called Sarah Makes a Wish in my book, Passionate Prayer. But in the, in the book, I tell all your story where Sarah had a brain tumor and she, the Make-A-Wish Foundation where she lives came out to her house and offered to make her a wish of whatever she wanted. She could have gone to Disneyland or, you know, met the president or met a famous movie star. And the only thing Sarah wanted was to be on Kids Time. And the Make-A-Wish Foundation flew you and your whole family out here to 3ABN yeah. to be on Kids Time. And you got to do a program with Miss Brenda, didn't you? Yeah. And you sang with Buddy and the Kids Time Singers. Was that fun? Yeah. It was fun. And Jesus healed you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And isn't God good? And you yeah. share Jesus everywhere you go, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, that reminds me, I see a lot of eyeglasses here. So tell me, what are you doing to share uh, Jesus with these? Uh, there's a kid and uh, he... Someone, in Africa. In Africa? Africa. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Can I the, tell the boys and girls what happened? Yes. Because um, what happened was that when Miss Brenda went to Africa, and, and that's story when I went to Africa is in this book too, boys and girls. It, that chapter is called uh, Broken Glasses, Broken Dreams. And in it, um, I tell the story about a little boy that couldn't go to school anymore because somebody stepped on his glasses and he didn't have any glasses and Miss Brenda didn't have any glasses to give him. And when Sarah found out I was first going to Africa, you spent a hundred dollars of your own money, didn't you, in the in, out of your savings and you bought eyeglasses. Miss Brenda took them over to Africa myself, didn't mm -hmm. I? But we ran out of glasses the first day. Boys and girls needed those glasses so much that they were gone. And when I came back from Africa and Sarah asked me, she goes, Miss Brenda, tell me about the boys and girls that got to have the glasses. And I shared with her the little boy that didn't get to have glasses and he got kicked out of school because he couldn't see. And that really, you, that gave you a passion to want to mm -hmm. help boys mm -hmm. like him, didn't it? Yes. So you started asking everybody you know if they could give you glasses, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And are th what are these? Are these the ones you've collected? Uh, yeah. And there's over a hundred eyeglasses mm -hmm. here, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. And and you want me to take those to Africa? Mm -hmm. But Miss yeah. Brenda, is that how are you going to get them to Africa? Because Miss Brenda doesn't have another trip scheduled. How are we going to get those to Africa? Oh. You don't know? No. <laughs> well, guess what? Miss Brenda has a surprise for you. I know how you're going to get these glasses to Africa, boys and girls. Do you want to know? The, the family that is in this book that adopted the little African baby it, that, that was in the story too, uh, they're uh, here today. Ray and Jackie, come on out. They're right here on Kids Time. Uh, Yay! Coming out, we're so excited to have Ray and Jackie Brasic with us, and they have a continued ministry over in Africa, don't you? We do. What are some of the things that you're doing in Africa? We're shipping 40-foot containers, the big ones that go on the ship and on the trains, and we put glasses in them if we can get them, and we put clothes and food for the kids, and, and shoes, shoes and storybooks, lots yes. of stuff. And your whole family works in this, doesn't don't they? That's you have right. a big warehouse where you collect things because you live in Canada. We do, yeah. And uh, and I'm so excited now. Would you be willing to take these eyeglasses? Sarah has been saving them up. Can you take those to Africa where she Absolutely. can see the kids that get those eyeglasses? Yes, we'll they definitely would love to. And Jackie, do you have an idea of how Sarah could find out who actually gets these glasses? Well, Sarah, we work with an optometrist in Africa, 
and he goes out and delivers the glasses and we will go with him and take mm -hmm. pictures and video so that you can see these glasses go to the children there. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Boys and girls, if you would like to help Sarah and the boys and girls in Africa with eyeglasses, if you go to our kidstimeforjesus.org website, just www.kidstimeforjesus.org, and you click on sharing time, there's an address there for my sharing time coordinator. Her name is Denise Wolf. that's Sarah's mom, and she, you can send all the glasses to her. She will make sure Ray and Jackie get them, and they will personally send those, take those glasses to those boys and girls in Africa. And guess what? Maybe next sharing time, Ray and Jackie, do you think you could come back and show that video? We can. Yeah. I sure. would love for that, wouldn't you, boys and girls? I would love that. I love helping others, and you know that is really sharing Jesus. Yeah. I want to thank you so much, Ray and Jackie, for all you're doing for the boys and girls in Africa. I want to thank you, Sarah, yeah. and you for bringing your dad here with us. We didn't even get a chance to introduce Dad, did we? <laughs> no, and she, Dad doesn't want to talk a lot. I promised him he wouldn't have to, but I'm so glad that he's here today and that you're here, and I want to encourage you to keep sharing Jesus. Boys and girls, remember, wherever you are, it's it's kids' time to share Jesus. said to me when I was little, a family is for loving each other, not for fighting with each other. God knows being kind to each other is the very best way to solve problems and make friends in the family rather than enemies. <laughs> the Bible tells us that long ago there was so much fighting among God's family that God sent Obed the prophet to give them a very special message. What do you think Obed told them to do? Well, that's what our Bible story is about today, but first, Let's see what Ranger Rod has to show us. Have you ever gotten into a fight with your brother or sister? Maybe they said something about you that made you really mad, or maybe they called you a name and you called them something even worse. Well, there are so many things that brothers and sisters fight about. But just because it's common for brothers and sisters to fight, it doesn't make it right, does it? You know, kids, there are many ways that we can share Jesus with others, but one of the very best ways is to choose to get along in your own family. Sure, there are a lot of things that your brother and sister might do to make you feel like fighting, but as my mom and dad say, It's almost time for kids' time. We're going to be late. It's time to share. There's a world out there looking for a friend like Jesus. Boys and girls, have you? Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Nature Time. Today we're in beautiful western Montana at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. It's a beautiful facility. I'm here with my great friend Libby, and we're going to talk just a little bit about grizzly bears. Boys and girls, besides a horse, which you all know is my favorite animal in the world, grizzly bear is second. Ranger Rod has spent thousands of hours in the backcountry, in the wilderness, hiking, backpacking, horsebacking, and in areas where grizzlies are, and I've never really had a big problem with one, but evidently we're here at the Grizzly Discovery Center, and some of these bears have gotten themselves into some kind of trouble because of human contact. Could you tell us just a little bit about that, Libby? Uh, we have eight bears here, and all of our bears are here because of conflicts they did have living out in the wild. We have several bears whose mothers were unfortunately shot and killed when they were just five months old. And we do have a few bears here that were able to get into garbage, pet food. Speaking of getting into 